There will come a time when you'll have to do some deleting of your users. Whether that's individual users or bulk users. Or they may leave for some particular reason and you might have to suspend their account. What are the pitfalls of this? What are the things to look out for? What policies and procedures should you put in place? Let's discuss that in this video. Welcome back to G Suite. So user administration is all well and good. The admin side of things is quite easy to create a user. So what's it like to delete a user or delete a group of users? Let's take a look into the users icon. Let's select our user. So we'll go with Boris collaboration. Um, of course, we can reset passwords, rename users, add to groups or more. With Google's licensing, you are charged by the number of users uh, that are active on the system. So when you consider this, um, clicking on more, you can suspend your user. For example, Boris might be on paternity leave or might be taking a sabbatical up the Himalayas. There could be any number of reasons why you'd want to suspend his access. There could be an ongoing HR case where he's home with pay and he's not to be given access to the environment. Loads of different reasons. Um, suspending the user is not deleting the user because the user is effectively still active. Okay. If you want to delete the user, click on delete user, up comes a pop-up box. Okay, now you're given the option to transfer all his information, calendar events, brand accounts, and what have you, um, to a different user, which you name here. Okay, so you could put in, I don't know, collaboration K. All right, all that information will be transferred. And you can select include files that are not shared with anyone. So all the stuff that he's got on his drive, in his calendar, will get transferred to Collaboration K. Now, here is a little learn more tip from Google. So delete a user from your organization. Okay. If you delete a user, they can't access any of your organization's G Suite services and the following data is deleted. G Suite data, all file types, Gmail and calendar data, except for shared calendars. Sites and pages, Google Vault, Google Play, Google Cloud Platform, brand account assets, YouTube videos and other non-core service content, Cloud Identity, Classroom and Google Groups. Okay, so before you delete a user, make sure you really want to delete them. And Google says, review if you want to delete a user or do you want to suspend them? If you're trying to resolve a conflicting account, don't delete the account to address the problem. If that person uses G Suite services for email, calendars and other services, they'll lose their data. Uh, if you want to change the username of a team member, you don't delete their account. You just rename the account. OK, and that will create an alias, things like that. Um, transferring someone's email. If you want to transfer a user's email to another account, do it before deleting the account. Do not and all their email will be deleted and can't be retrieved. Transfer important files and data. Transferred calendars. Set up an auto reply. All these things should be put in place really before you go to delete user accounts. Okay. You don't want to lose any IP that that user might have been working on. You want to keep as much as it you possibly can. So easiest thing to do, if it was me, um, suspend the user account. Then with an admin password, go in, check through what you want, set your auto reply on the email. Fred has left the company. Um, transfer any information. Have a good think about it. Make sure that person's not coming back and there's a thing on that drive you want to keep. Transfer anything you, you do, say to a line manager or somebody who's replacing them in that role. And then delete the user. All is not lost, however. When you do delete a user, you have up to 20 days to restore that information. 
past 20 days, then that's it. It's gone for good. So, how do you restore a deleted user? Well, I couldn't be easier. And I think we'll go through that as well. So, you sign in. Yes, we're all good at signing in. Um, you look at your users, you add a filter and say recently deleted, and then you can say continue. So let's take a look at that. So here's our user, Boris Collaboration. We're going to transfer all his information to collaborationkernel.com, collaboration K. Let's click delete. Off it goes, has a bit of a think about it. Successfully deleted the user, Boris Collaboration. Data transfer has started and we will notify you once it's complete. To ensure data safety, the account will be suspended before data transfer. Once data transfer is complete, the account will be deleted. Click done. So now all we got to do is wait for the announcement from G Suite to say that yes, all that information has been transferred over to Kernel Collaboration. Now, as you can see, I've done a refresh of the admin console. Of course, it's all in a Chrome browser, so you can do a refresh. And we've seen that Boris collaboration is not there. So, how do we get him back? Let's add a filter. Click on recently deleted. There's Boris collaboration. Tells us we've got 20 days left to recover. You then click recover. That will recover good old Boris. On the more section here, you've got manage custom attributes and you've got download users. So, interesting. All about the filters. Keeps your user management a little bit more tidier. So you've got 20 days to get Boris back and we'll leave him deleted for the time being. But all his information that we selected has been transferred to kernel collaboration. So, that was how to delete a user and the ramifications of doing such and a little insight into perhaps some of the processes you may want to employ before you delete them. Like, for example, suspending the user, nominating somebody to receive all their information. You do want to lose that company IP. Thanks for watching. Check back for the next video in the series.